uh, morning walks, uh, it so happened that I was probably the only um, man wearing white at that time. I was in Mayapur and, and there was all my uh, senior god brothers, uh, a lot of sannyasins and GBCs. And I was in the back of the line or somewhere in the periphery of it, but kind of close to him. And one morning it got pretty uh, interesting and, and uh, really, um, um, well, so, uh, apparently there was some controversy about a god brother um, giving away his books and uh, the bodies uh, I think they were kind of mad about it and they were thinking that he wasn't doing right or something and there was all these big issues trying to be resolved in the morning walk and Brabba was uh, very quiet didn't really speak and um, when they said well Prabhupada he's giving away your books mm. Prabhupada said well as long as he pays me, that's fine. <laughs> as long as he covers the cost of the book, that he can do. What, that he can do. And so they went on, and everybody was like, there was some argument going on. I can't recall right now. There was uh, big shots, and and um, Prabhupada again mentioned how we had we had the real United Nations, and. and um, so we kept on walking, and they told Sri Prabhupada, "We're going to go. Uh, we'll take you to this." It was a panel with all um, all the pictures from all the deities around the world. And the sun was coming up at that time, and uh, there was three things he said that that morning. Well, this is the second one. He turned around and he pointed with his cane. He was like really regal too. Very. It just I made so so much sense. It was right on the spot, and he started pointing out at the trees and. The scenery, the scenery around her that was coming out in this hot Bengali sun, and and he says, "See how now the sun came out and everything is clear to see. So one day you'll see that Krishna will appear and you'll see everything clearly." And uh, he kept on walking, and the devotees wanted to ask him and wanted to get his opinion on that. He he wasn't speaking too much. Then he. Um, he actually the, um, he didn't seem too happy about all the argument and didn't want to really talk. And, but the children saw him. And as we were walking down the hall of that pando, the children were peeking through and calling his name. And, and Prabhupada would go like he was about to run after them with a cane and you know, chasing them <laughs> and smiling. Many turn around and smile and say, see, the, all men and children make friends fast, easily. <laughs> My second initiation, and Hanuman Prabhu again called me on the phone and said, Prabhupada, Sila Prabhupada is going to be in Mexico City, so let's go, let's go see him. And uh, it was such an ex exciting occasion. And he says, we, you'll get, for some reason, the bodies here in LA they didn't know me, and I got forgotten, always in the last, in the list, or whatever, and uh, such a big temple. And so he calls me and says, no, let's go, I'll, I'll recommend you again um, to get second initiation. So I got a chance to get get a second person and um, I was again so nervous, I'd never been so close to him and I think he even grabbed my hand to like, say like this dummy, you know, one, two, three, <laughs> four. <laughs> and um, But I wanted to give him so much and I didn't have anything so I went out and collected some dachin and made some money and brought it back and then um, decided I felt that it wasn't enough and we were going to, uh, so we went, we were going to Guatemala to a program, I think, with Hanuman. And so we went and I, I bought a blanket and um, an onyx little box of, made of onyx and a jar of honey. That was, I suppose, very nice, good quality honey. And um, I bought it because I really wanted to see if I could please him and see him, if maybe I'd get to see him to eat it or taste it. Or, and um, so we brought it back, and it's the last day that Prabhupada's staying at the room, so the room is really buzzing with devotees coming in and out, everybody's getting ready, they're getting his things ready to go, and Prabhupada's very relaxed, and all of a sudden the room kind of gets empty, and there's about maybe Sruti Kirta was his um, uh, servant then. And uh, again, I didn't feel like, I said, well, Prabhupada, I brought you this. I didn't say anything, I just, stood there hoping that he would take the honey and he was looking at things on his desk and then he noticed that there was a pot of honey and I kept thinking please I hope he opens it and 
So I look at look again up and it says, Well, I can eat honey right now. This honey actually honey you have to store it for one year before you eat it. And that was it, you know. So <laughs> the second time um we went with Hanuman to see him. Uh, there were like two days, and uh, he received us um, in his room and um, very casual to very fatherly that time. He was smiling. He had a gamcha on, and you can see his knee, and he was, uh, one knee was up. And, um, and Satsarup Maharaj was uh, taking care of some papers, and my daddy was around him, and he was here in back of him for some reason. And uh, Hanuman felt really bad for a long while about, you know, leaving Sanya. So he again asked, um, so if all Prabhupada I failed you, I'm, I'm now a lost uh, cause. And Prabhupada was smiling, going, no, no, no. And then he laughs, says, no, it's just like playing Mridanga, he says. And he went like this, and he's playing. And he says, the more you practice, the better it gets. <laughs> so Krishna consciousness is like that. He says, don't worry. Says, At that time, Hanuman had lost his GBC. It was a whole thing about his being married. and um, So Hanuman said, well, Siddha Prabhupada, I, I really don't seem to get along too well with my god brothers. You know? And his brother said, well, that's all right. I said, I, I, is it, uh, he's my, is it, actually, I didn't like my spiritual master society either. <laughs> and, and then he went, uh, we were like really surprised, and then he went like this with this in his hands, and he counted, said, yes, about... I associated with my spiritual master about ten times, and um, and then he got serious, like, he, and he said, "But I follow all his instructions," and in that way, I I wasn't separate from him, and you know, he wasn't away from me, and neither myself from him. And so he says, "Well, whatever there is two men, there is two opinions. So now you go and preach the call to Lord Chaitanya." And so Hanuman again asked, uh, well, Srila Prabhupada, when you're gone, who's going to succeed you? And Prabhupada quoted Lord Chaitanya's verse, and uh, unfortunately I can't remember, but... Uh, and he said, I want all of you to become gurus. That's your duty, to, to follow in my footsteps. And, and Hanuman... Uh, Again, ask about what about for advice? And he says, "Go to the devotee that your heart tells you to." And that was it. And that was the seventy-five. One time, I remember uh, we were in Mexico too again, and um, there were two sannyasins or um, from India that the Bodhisattva met in Sankirtan, and uh, they wore this big red dot on their forehead, and the bodies were like. Oh, now Prabhupada is going to sauce them and put them in their place. They're in personalness. And, and uh, they had had discussions and arguments with the devotees, and it was a very big deal. And, and, and so that afternoon I was there in, in <coughs> the room, <coughs> excuse me, and these two sannyasins came in, and um, Prabhupada immediately you know, asked for a place to sit, and he was so friendly to them, and spoke a uh, little Bengali and Hindi, and then, then he went on to English for some reason. I guess one of them didn't um, speak any of the dialects. And um, they spoke very light, and he made them laugh, he did some jokes, and then he asked them if they knew Baba Gita. And they, they nodded, and they says, Do you know Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And they again nodded, and says, Well, so now, please, preach the cult of Lord Chaitanya. Haribo. And, they, and they, made, they both went up, their arms went up, and Haribo, and they were all smiles, and the argument was vanished, and, and uh, Prashadam was brought, and they were eating, and so happy. And so it dissipated. I mean, situations were like, uh, it seemed to be, um, he knew what to do at what particular time, exactly what to do, and what to answer at what particular time, what particular person. Okay, this is the 1976. We, um, we've arrived to uh, uh, India with Kargamuni Maharaj, and he, uh, we were in a travel and Sankirtan party that went from Germany to, well, actually, we started in the U.S. and then collected and um, lots of money at that time. We used to call it Gargamani. <laughs> the devotees came in, and so we uh, went to Germany and bought vans and equipped them with uh, 
really it's state-of-the-art stuff, uh, films to, uh, of, of all the temples and deities to um, paintings and pictures of all the deities. And we had thousands of them. And we went through to go to India. And um, so I got, I got there a little bit before the festival hit. And um, Prabhupada, I think, was uh, arriving maybe two days or so later. I think it was during the festivals in the early 76. And um, this morning, uh, this particular morning, I remember Prabhupada gave a two hour, about a two hour lecture. It was well, quite lengthy. And, uh, and it was all about consciousness. And um, not the dress, he said. Uh, he, he pointed, he says, you could be perfectly shaven and have nice tilak. And, and then he looked at the devotee and says, how much is a, a, a thread? Uh, 20 paisa. Yeah, 20 paisa. I could go buy at the market a thread and put it on. But that doesn't make me a Brahmin, Prabhupada said. Um, it's, uh, it's a matter of consciousness. And then I remember he looked down and he said, the fly is sitting in the same seat as the spiritual master. But consciousness is different. So he emphasized that consciousness above dress or anything else. And to the development of that consciousness through the, the process of uh, bhakti yoga and rendering service to the pure devotee. Yeah. How about uh, to your sister? Any conversations? Uh, yes, um, Bhaktadasi became the art director for BBT and organized her, her vast knowledge of book publication to help us save thousands of dollars. Um, he managed to put all the pictures together in the Shimad Bhagavatam. And so he had an off she had an office and after the initial meeting, that was this is in 1975. She's back in Los Angeles and being the art director and all of a sudden one morning Prabhupada uh, shows up at BBT and with the entourage of sannyasis, Bhavananda was there, I remember because he later on told me something and and so they went straight to her office and boom the door opens and uh, it's Srila Prabhupada. And, of course, she pays, you know, obeisances, and and just like <laughs> I was really uh, taken aback, and uh, Prabhupada just like he could, with his eyes, he could see he calmed the whole room. I remember her telling me this a few times, and um, I hope I do justice to a story there. And um, his eyes stopped for a long time at a picture. She had gone through all the. She reminded me that all the photographs at that time. They were all in shoeboxes on one room. The, everything that we ever had collected from all these different sources that and the US BBT had. And uh, she found a picture of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati. And she had a frame and then put it on her desk. And Prabhupada looked at the room and he was very impressed. And she was a very meticulous person. And so it's a very spotless place, and but he he went into like a trance on this picture. He, the room, be, you know, the silence, the <laughs> and and then he looked at her, and she knew it was like a child asking for, you know, would you give me this without asking? This is what she thought, and so immediately she took it and gave it to him. He kept it. <laughs> he kept it for a while while she was asking. Her. But if her very first thing he asked her, it was very fatherly. He says, where are your children? Oh, Srila Prabhupada, there are, you can see through this window, there was a BBT, was, there was another building next, to the, you see there's a little space in between the two buildings, and through the window you can see the building, her uh, apartment, and she had a, a friend, um, Brahmachari, um, that Hanuman had made devotee, um, taking care of them. He liked to do that, and, and so, um, ah, okay, he says, that's very good. And then went on to ask about the technical questions, something like that. And um, I find out about the meeting because when I got to New York, Bhavananda came in, Bhavananda Maharaj at that time, and came in, and, and Prabhu came in and says, Oh, you're, um, you're Bhaktadasi's brother? Ah, oh, Prabhu says, She's very intelligent. And then he went, bah, bah. He said, I'm Sanyas, I shouldn't talk like this. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so I feel like I should say something like this because she's passed away and, and um, she worked very hard for to please Sri Prabhupada too. So. We were in Mayapur and, and Hrida Nanda Maharaj was very ill uh, in stomach pain and like that. So um, 
Srila Prabhupada said, Tulsi water. You just drink Tulsi water. And it did help him. You could ask him. <laughs> I remember he was very much in pain. He was very ill, and it really did help him. Then he told Hanuman, says, oh, the most, it will be three lifetimes for my initiated disciples at the most. But don't make me work, he said, don't make me come back. <laughs> I remember um, um, being in a morning walk uh, up on the roof in Mayapur too. And this was about Gurukula and it became very, uh, a, clue, a very key thing for me later on when I, I heard from grown up children what Gurukula was about. But at that time, Jagaman was little. He was about 10 years old. And there was some disagreement. He was kind of being rebellious with the teacher. And this teacher decided to not feed him for the whole day. And uh, when Prabhupada heard this, it was, he, I'd never seen him angry before. <laughs> he hit the roof. And he said, this, this man should be punished. This teacher should be punished. A child should never be starve or, you know, not fed. And so, and the, the, you know, the devotees went to look for him and like that. And he had run to the train station. <laughs> and, uh, so, but I saw how much importance Prabhupada gave to everyone, no matter how old or how young they were or what uh, gender they were. And, uh, so in Mexico City, we ask, um, she had a chance to be in a few more meetings um, and, uh, with Hanuman because there were details Hanuman wanted to find out. And it was very important things about zo uh, zones or where to come and not. And Prabhupada didn't seem to attach very much importance to the zones. Uh, he actually thought that we should preach any place everywhere and that uh, there might be differences of, of opinion, but we should, you know, our goal was to propagate the cult of Lord Chaitanya. And, so Bhaktadasi was in the meeting and they were all asking, for some reason they were talking about liberation and who, when everybody was going to get liberated. And they, they looked at her and said, and, and you'll be liberated in this lifetime, to my sister, to Bhaktadasi. <laughs> and, um, and that was in 75. And, uh, and, and years went by and uh, now last December I had a chance to, to see her depart. And, it was very static too, of course, and, and we did feel the presence there again of, of Prabhupada. Like we were there and there was this uh, Prabhu, I wish I remember his name, he was about to go to Hungary and that time uh, it was the Iron Curtain and it was, it, you know, the very big chance that if he would go in he would never be able to come back out into the West. And um, so many questions we brought by this Prabhuji and, and um, the sannyasins were there and so we were asking, so at one point he he asked him, uh, well, Srila Prabhupada, uh, they did send us to, they put us in jail a few times and um, what do we do? They try to force us to eat meat. And, uh, Shall we fast? And Prabhupada said, yes. Even to death? And Prabhupada said, yes. So. Um, for some people, it might be hard to understand, but at that time, it makes so much sense. And it didn't matter, really. Uh, I had, it's not because of anything, but I had a chance to, actually, it was, I was Sankirtan leader for a minute there in Buenos Aires, and, and because Hanuman was a foreigner, and we were afraid that if he would leave, nobody would know what to do. So we always split the party in different ways, so the police would chase us, and then I was the one to be taken out to the, in a police station, and I would then, after an hour, explain the philosophy, usually, and they would let us go. But there was a chance, uh, there was one time where they didn't. They took me straight from the police station to the secret police um, department complex. Very difficult, very heavy place. Argentina is not, you know, a very difficult place at times. And, um, well, of course, it was interrogation all day long, and threats of losing our life, etc. But there was never a moment, and it was all thanks to Prabhupada, and I know there was never a moment I was afraid. In any other instance, for me to do anything else, for anybody else, I think I'll be afraid. I will think twice to do anything. But at that time, uh, there was no fear. I experienced what to, to be no anxiety and no fear. 
even though in the midst of this, you know, spreading to Prabhupada. The day went by and Prabhupada left next morning and, and so I went in and there was, um, he had left me some twigs, there was something on the dresser that I had that he had left, some cashew and um, some pistachio nuts and uh, Nanda Kumar called me over and says, he had pathis this morning and uh, here there's some for you I left. And then he told me about bread, they had given Prabhupada some, uh, at that time what well, we thought it was very good bread, it was um, Oro Wheat Company had come out with the first whole wheat bread and somebody fed it to Prabhupada and he ate it. But uh, Nanda Kumar says, uh, he woke up and says, please don't ever give me bread again like that. <clears> he <throat> says, actually grains that are cooked, he says, they, they gave me nightmares. And he says, actually, um, when somebody cooks grain or the food is cooked, by, uh, by all, the, all their vibrations, all their karma goes into this food. So it's very important that you make your own, that devotees should make their... He encouraged us to, to make bread and to feed on that. Thank you.